Hello, and welcome to this week's story, The Puppy's Ball. In your world, things are important. But what about the things that aren't important anymore? Well, sometimes those things end up here, in the magical land of Dilstonia, where little creatures called the Jifflings live on their little Jiffling ship. They find these things that we throw away and fish them out of their sea so they can recycle them and put them to good use once again. And here they are now, ready to work. Eccentric young pumpkin. Ooh, I'm ever so excited. The hedge, who is a very lazy jiffling. Like, hey man, is it time for bed yet? Miss Katie, who loves fixing things and dressy up. Sometimes I like both together. Albert, the ship's gardener. Hop -a bay who's been into me cabbage patch like? And Friedeline, a very sensible jiffling who looks after everybody on the ship. Yeah, that is correct. Oh. Today on the ship, everyone has been getting ready for a special event called Diwali, which is a festival of lights. <laughs> so they've decorated their ship and now everyone is gathered at the front ready to enjoy the evening's fireworky fun. Oh. Yay! Hey. Yeah. Miss Katie and Hedge are busy putting out deck chairs for everyone to sit on, which they've made from some old toothpicks and leftover blanket corners. Like, these chairs look totally comfy, Miss Katie man. They should be, Hedge. Those blankets are made from the softest sheep's wool. Bah. But as Hedge went to relax into his nice soft deck chair, Young Pumpkin came whizzing over in a big ball of excitement. Oh, I love sheep and wool and woolly sheepy softness too. Then Young Pumpkin dived right onto the same chair Hedge was trying to sit in, causing it to collapse in a big soft heap on the floor. Oh, Pumpkin! It is good that you are excited for the fireworks, but you must try to calm down just a tiny bit. Otherwise, the poor Hedge might get hurt. Oh goodness, it seems that having fallen over, the hedge has just gone to sleep right there on the floor. Ah, oh, lazy hedge. Oh, don't worry, Friedeline, I'll wake him up. Then young pumpkin zoomed off into the sea cupboard, grabbed the horn from his little tricycle bike and whooshed back over, honking at top volume. Grabble, <laughs> like, whoa, man. Well, that certainly woke Hedge up, and he clambered to his feet as Pumpkin carried on honking his horn excitedly. Like, I don't think I'll fall asleep again for a whole week now. Oh, Pumpkin Man, if you keep on honking that horn, you'll wake up the whole of Dilstonia, including all my sleepy little vegetables, and our pet mouse, Geoffrey, too. That's right, Albert. Geoffrey, your pet mouse, doesn't like loud noises, like honky horns or fireworks. So he's tucked away in his little straw house until morning. Ooh, we can't forget about Geoffrey. He should enjoy the fireworks, too. Then, before anyone could stop him, a very excited young pumpkin zipped off inside and returned just as quick, carrying a rather startled-looking Geoffrey the Mouse. Meep. Now, Geoffrey can enjoy all the bright flashes and loud bangs right here with us. Pumpkin, mice don't like loud bangs. Aye, Geoffrey will just be frightened. But I really want Jeffrey to join in. Pumpkin, Jeffrey is our pet, so it is the most important Jiffling's duty that we look after our pets and do what is best for them. That's very true, Friedeline. 
But for now, your Diwali preparations will have to wait, because that sound means an object, which was lost or thrown away on Earth, has turned up in the sea around your ship. Off you pop to heave it in. <sighs> the object landed on deck with a boingy bounce-a-thon. It was round and rubbery and hollow in the middle. I think that's a lava lamp that we can use to make our party even more colourful. But then Hedge stepped forward, for he knew just what the object was. He tippily toppled up onto the story seat, and then he began his tale. This is the puppy's ball, and my old chimney sweep, Dick Van Drainpipe, told me all about it. Once in a beautiful country called Austria, there lived a lady called Wizzy Joanna, who loved to run extra fast through the hills and valleys, speeding everywhere as fast as she could. Hello! Look out! Goodbye! And Joanna would run all over Austria at top speed, never slowing down for anyone. But even though Wizzy Joanna loved running, she did find that she felt a little bit lonely, running everywhere on her own. So one day, she got herself a tiny little puppy called Wolfgang to keep her company. Oh, Wolfie, we will have the best time ever, running everywhere together at top speed. So out they went for their first run. And to start with, Wolfie was very excited. But after they had run all morning, he wasn't quite so excited anymore. Because Joanna ran so fast that his little puppy paws just couldn't keep up. Come on, Wolfie! Faster! Good boy! Woo, woo. Mm. Well, poor fluffy Wolfie tried to tell Joanna that she was going too fast. But puppies and people don't speak the same language. So Joanna thought Wolfie was barking because he was so excited. Oh, you want even more fun? I know, I throw this little puppy's ball for you to chase. So Wizzy Joanna threw her ball and it went bouncing off into the distance with tired little Wolfie chasing after it, rather exhausted. Well, by the time they got home, Wolfie was ready for a great big snooze and he curled right up in his bed. But before he had even managed to drift off... ding a ling sleepyhead! It's time for our mid-afternoon post-run surprise jog! Woohoo! Now poor Wolfie couldn't think of anything worse than another super fast run. But Wizzy Joanna clipped on his lead, grabbed his ball, and off they went again, zooming out the door and across the hills until they reached the Danube River. And now we throw the ball. Then Joanna threw Wolfgang's little puppy ball far up into the air. But 
Instead of chasing it, Wolfie just flopped down in a heap on the floor. Far too tired to run after his ball. And as they watched, it bounced once, then twice, and then splash right into the river. Then, Joanna looked down. Oh dear, perhaps I have been running too fast for your little puppy paws. Woof. Well, I shall go slower then, Wolfie, so that you can enjoy yourself too. Woof, woof, woof. Well, Wolfie liked that idea very much. And as they watched the little ball float off down the river, Joanna decided that from then on, she would be a little bit less whizzy huh. and instead do what was best for her pet. Huh. Not just what was best for her. Woof, woof. I... And now the puppy's ball is here. Yes, Albert. So what could we do with it? Hmm. Perhaps it could be the life boy for safety in the sea. Well, that sounds very clever, Friedeline. But then young pumpkin stepped forwards. Why don't we cut the ball in two and fill one half with nice soapy water so Geoffrey can relax indoors in a nice little mouse bubble bath whilst we all enjoy the fireworks outside. And maybe we could put a little candle in the other half of the ball so Geoffrey can even have his own little festival of lights too. Ah, oh, Pumpkin, that sounds perfect. So Miss Katie used her tools to make Geoffrey a nice little bubbly bath and candle holder. And then, with Geoffrey safe inside, all the GIFs enjoyed the spectacular sounds from the special Diwali fireworks. <laughs> and then, after ooing and ahhing at all the multicoloured lights high up in the sky, the GIFs realised that it was rather late, so they packed away their deck chairs, sang a little lullaby. <laughs> And then it was time for bed. Good night, young pumpkin. Good night. Good night, Albert. Why, I'll see you in the morning, like. Good night, Friedeline. And it is a good night. Yeah. Good night, Miss Katie. Night, night. Good night, Hedge. Hedge. <laughs> Oh, I think the head is asleep already. And goodbye to you, wherever you are. Maybe next time you see a thing that you might throw away, you'll stop and see if you can use it again, just like our friends the Jifflings. And maybe the thing you use again will have a story to tell too. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Bottle Ship. For all the parents listening, if you'd like to, you can donate to the show at patreon.com forward slash bottle ship. And as a thank you, we'll send your child a personalised audio message from the Jifflings. And for all the children listening, if you enjoyed the show, please leave a review and share the podcast with your friends. We've had some lovely reviews this week, haven't we, Jifflings? Oh, yes. Like this one from New Zealand. It says... Hi, I'm Luke from New Zealand and I am five. I live by the water with my sister Millie and my mum and dad. My favourite bottle ship episode is The Boomerang because one day I'm going to get a boomerang from Australia. My mum likes the character Friedeline because she is very sensible and helpful. And my dad likes the hedge because he is really tired and likes to eat and is so funny. I like all the characters.
I like when the jifflings find something new in the water, and I like how the net can catch long things and small things too. I also like the turkey's basketball episode, because it's so funny. Like when the ball lands on the deck and bounces a lot, and Miss Katie has to run after it. Thanks for all your stories, and I hope you like my review. From Luke. Wow, that's the perfect review, Luke. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we've had this review too, from America. It says, I love Bottle Ship. My favourite story is the Crystal Ball. And maybe you can do one called the Dragon Socks, please. I love you. I love all of your stories. Thank you. From Cole in Washington. Like, totally thank you, Cole. That is a brilliant review. I, and thank you to everyone who left us a review or sent us an email. We really do love to hear from everyone. Indeed, young pumpkin. So please remember to leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you'd like to send us an email, please send it to thejifflings at gmail.com. Thanks again, and we'll bring you more exciting adventures with our friends, the Jifflings, very soon. Goodbye.